So I got a comment from a viewer that suggested that we should do one of our housing market reports for the entire Southeast. And I thought it was a really good idea. But then I got to thinking that with the election coming up next week, it probably could be interesting and even beneficial to a lot of people if we just looked at a snapshot of pretty much the entire country within reason just prior to the election and just see where we're at. And then it's possibly something that we could circle back to maybe a year from now and see what differences we can spot. So I'm gonna run through a lot of information pretty quickly for the sake of time. What we are looking at are active listings and this data, which is fresh, it updates weekly, does not include new construction or condos. And you'll actually see on there that you can search all the data on condos separately. Now I am in the Southeast, so let's start with Atlanta, Georgia. The median list price in Atlanta, Georgia as of October the 25th is $425,075. Coming in at an average price per square foot across all market segments in Atlanta of two hundred and twenty. I'm sorry, $233. One thing that I always have to point out in our market reports, though, is that you have to segment the market. And so the top segment of the market in Atlanta, the average price per square foot of Atlanta's top market segment is $366. And in that case, you're talking about homes that are over a million dollars. But when we talk about market health, one thing that I think you always have to look at is the average days on market. How long are homes sitting before they can get sold? Average days on market is the indicator if people can actually sell houses or not. And the average days on market in Atlanta right now across all market segments is 99 days with an average of almost 52% of those homes having to decrease their price before getting sold and inventory levels in Atlanta are higher than they have been in four years. The median rent in Atlanta $2,450. So let's move over to the east to Augusta, Georgia, a city that I lived in briefly. Median list price in Augusta is $200,000 cheaper at $239,165 with an average price per square foot of $139 per with the top segment of Augusta's market being at $162 per. And these are around half a million dollar homes. The homes in Augusta are sitting on the market for an average of 84 days with 44% of those homes almost having to have a price decrease before they can go under contract and get sold. Inventory levels in Augusta are also up significantly compared to where it's been over the last four or five years. And the median rent in Augusta is $1,300. All right, let's move over just down the road for me in Charleston, South Carolina. Median list price in Charleston, $840,258 with an average price per square foot of $397 per with the top segment in Charleston's market, $751 per. And you're talking about multi-million dollar homes in that case. The homes in Charleston are sitting on the market for an average of 78 days with over 52% of those homes having to decrease their price to get sold. And the inventory levels in Charleston have been pretty stable for four years now with a median rent of $3,400. Charleston's market is pretty hot. The most popular city in the state and one of the most moved to cities in the country is an area that I do service, which is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Our median list price in Myrtle Beach is $447,123 with an average price per square foot of two twenty five. dollars When you look at the top segment of our homes in Myrtle Beach, it's significantly higher at in the 330s. And the reason is the oceanfront properties, the prices skyrocket. About 51.5% of the properties in Myrtle Beach are having to decrease their price to get sold with an average of 92 days on the market. And we have seen inventory levels this year climb in Myrtle Beach, which is something to be very excited about for us with a median rent of $1,975, just under $2,000 to rent. All right, so another popular city in the United States, let's move up north to Raleigh, North Carolina. Median list price in Raleigh, North Carolina, $626,912 with an average price per square foot of $263 for those homes. Top market segment in Raleigh, $436. And again, these are multi million dollar homes or even at the bottom of that market segment close to it. They sit on the market for an average of 89 days with about 47% of those homes having to decrease their price to go into contract and inventory levels have been rather stable for the last three years. Median rent in Raleigh, North Carolina, $1,950. All right, how about Charlotte, North Carolina? Median list price in Charlotte, $470,998. I'm sorry, $988. Average price per square foot for homes across all market segments in Charlotte, $244. If you segment it out, the top market segment in Charlotte, $353 per square foot for your million dollar and up homes in Charlotte. About half of the homes that get listed in Charlotte will experience a price decrease. Something to definitely talk with your agent about if you're interested in a home in Charlotte. Make sure that you're putting the right offer in and not potentially overpaying. And these homes do sit on the market for an average of 68 days. 
relatively hot market in Charlotte with inventory levels that have skyrocketed in 2024, much higher than where they were this time last year. And the median rent in Charlotte's about $2,000 at 2095 Let's hit a city in Florida. So let's hit a city in Florida and then we'll go up north a little bit. Median list price in Jacksonville, Florida, $334,181. These homes on average at a price per square foot are $196 per. And that's across all market segments. And also just make sure you're taking a look at the timeline. You can see where home prices went up post pandemic home prices shot up across the country. So just something to keep in mind. They've been relatively stable the last three years in Jacksonville, 196 per top market segment in Jacksonville. However, $258. These are about $600,000 homes and up for that top market segment in Jacksonville. And these homes sit on the market for an average across all market segments of about 87 days with over 55% of them having to decrease their original list price and inventory levels in Jacksonville have also increased significantly from where they were this time last year. Median rent in Jacksonville, Florida, $1,710. All right, let's go up north and start checking out some towns up there. Let's check out Reading, Pennsylvania. How about that? Median list price in Reading, Pennsylvania, 404000 $673 with an average price per square foot of $166 per the top market segment close to the same at $174 per so you're looking at $600,000 homes and up these homes sit on the market for an average of 64 days with only about 38% of them having to decrease their price now I know that this is a smaller market than some of the other ones we looked at but I just thought it'd be helpful to switch it up instead of looking at like Philadelphia you know give you something on the the outside there to consider all right let's move over and check out Pittsburgh Pennsylvania median list price in Pittsburgh two $252,523. The average price per square foot in Pittsburgh is $174. Top market segment in Pittsburgh, $254. And you're looking at $550,000 homes and up with an average days on market of 94 days with about 52% and a quarter having to decrease their original list price. And the inventory levels in Pittsburgh have been relatively the same for four years now. Median rent in Pittsburgh, $1,600. Particularly with average days on market, tell me if you're starting to see that it's pretty consistent across the country, at least so far, which really just tells you that people are buying houses pretty consistently, at least in every market we've looked at so far. So let's go out west. Let's hit like Seattle, Washington. Median list price in Seattle, Washington is $1 million. By far the most expensive city that we've looked at. Price per square foot, an average of $549 per with the top market segment in Seattle, coming in at $723 per square foot. These are, again, multi-million dollar homes. These homes sit on the market for an average of 65 days, so relatively hot market in Seattle, with just under 42% of those homes having to decrease their original list price. And the inventory levels in Seattle have increased pretty significantly higher than they were this time last year, about where they were two years ago, which is right there moving through the spike of the mortgage rates with the median rent of $3,800 in Seattle. Let's go down south and check out San Diego, California. Median list price in San Diego, $1.4 million. The top segment in San Diego is $892 per square foot, with these being almost $3 million homes in that top market segment. But just across all segments in San Diego, the average price per square foot, $758. These homes sit on the market for an average of 55 days. So a pretty hot market in San Diego, with 43% of those homes having to decrease their price. That's one of the lower price decreases metrics that we've looked at across the country so far, which is shocking considering it's the most expensive market that we've looked at so far. And the inventory levels have shot up uh, this year from where they were this time last year in San Diego with a median rent of $4,200, making San Diego a pretty expensive place to live. How about Austin, Texas? Median list price in Austin, Texas, $708,554 with an average price per square foot of $352 per. And in that top market segment, you're looking at $642 per square foot in Austin. These are multi-million dollar homes, $2 million and up. They sit on the market for an average across all market segments of about 101 days with just under 59% of them having to decrease their price to go under contract and get sold. And the inventory levels in Austin are also significantly higher than they were over the last few years years with a median rent of $2,500 in Austin, Texas. All right, let's move up to the Midwest. Let's hit St. Louis, Missouri. Median list price in St. Louis, $184,365 with an average price per square foot of $137 per. In that top market segment, just under $200 per square foot. These are half a million dollar homes and up. They sit on the market for an average of 86 days with about 45% of them having to decrease their original list price and the inventory levels in 
St. Louis have also gone up this year pretty significantly. Median rent in St. Louis, Missouri, $1,395. Minneapolis, Minnesota has a median list price of $404,885 with an average price per square foot in their top market segment of $299. These are about million dollar homes and up. But across the board, the average price per square foot in Minneapolis is $218 per. These homes sit on the market for an average of 63 days with about 43% of those homes decreasing their original list price and the inventory levels in Minneapolis have also gone up since last year. The median rent in Minneapolis, $2,400. All right, let's shoot over and check out Boston, and I think we'll wrap this up. So the median list price in Boston is $2.3 million, which is down significantly since April. And it's interesting here, just looking at Boston as an example, and if you're considering moving to Boston, definitely pay attention to this. Look how the home prices in the spring and early summer in Boston are high and then how much they drop. I mean, it's a significant drop. Four out of the last five years, same trend. Now that cyclical pattern is pretty similar to what we have here in a lot of places in the country, but that's like really significant. I mean, you're talking about $1,100 per square foot at its peak, now down to $880 per square foot. I mean, do the math on that. That's $200 plus dollars per square foot. Imagine a 4,000 square foot home, 3,000 square foot home. That's a lot of money. The top market segment in Boston being $1,800 plus per square foot. And you are talking about multi-million dollar homes in Boston at that point. So yeah, if you're looking to buy in Boston, definitely pay attention to the cyclical patterns of their market. With an average days on market across all market segments of 103 days, understanding that information is going to help you with your strategy, your pricing strategy, that is, if you're going to submit an offer on one of those houses in Boston with a median rent of $3,960. So I think that'd be a good place to stop. Uh, the purpose of this was to get a snapshot of the country and see where we are now. Obviously, the election or election day is next week. So I think it'd be very interesting to watch how our housing market nationally changes over the coming 12 to 24 months and definitely something that we may circle back to, say, a year from now and see what kind of changes there were. If there's any particular market that you'd like to see that we didn't look at, I'll put my email address down in the description of the video. If you'll just email me and let me know that you want to receive these market reports, I can plug you in and they will send to you automatically for free every week. And you can search any market in the country. So if you're looking in your general area or an area that you're looking to move to or sell out of, this tool will come in really handy. Remember this updates, this is weekly. So this data refreshes every Friday. The other thing that I will say is my service area is northeast South Carolina. So everything from Sumter, South Carolina over to Myrtle Beach from the North Carolina border all the way down to Georgetown, South Carolina. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I appreciate your viewership. Y'all take care and God willing, we'll see you on the next video.